Today we are heading to West Ham to take them over, rebuild them into not only the best club in England, but the best club in Europe. However, that is going to be very difficult because at the time of recording, they are sitting in 14th spot in the Premier League, despite making a lot of big signings like Niklas Füllkrug, who is 82 rated, 31 years of age. Other players like Rodriguez, who is out of position by the way here. Also Aaron Wan-Bissaka from Manchester United, so they've made a lot of signings. Soler is one of them as well. He's 27, 78 rated. And the centre-back, where is he? Todibo, 80 rated at 24. And still, they are sitting closer to the relegation zone than to European spots where they belong. As we can see, Kudus and Rodriguez both out of position. I don't really like that formation here. But uh, Antonio, what I've also realized, is going to retire at the end of the season. So we are immediately going to replace him with Fulkrug here. But uh, yeah, let me figure something out. This is already looking much, much better. We have 4-3-3 uh, on defense. Suchek and Rodriguez both fit into that form formation very good, very well. Kudus on the wing alongside Bowen. Fulkrug up top. Areola in that is already 31. He's 81 rated, although Emerson on the left back spot is uh, 78 rated. Maybe also one of our weaknesses. Quite a few players on loan to us, like Todibo, who is, uh, of course, 24 80 rated, our best centre back. And Carlos Soler, who is 78 rated at 27 from PSG. Both of those, if we want to keep them, we need to go in for them this season. We also have two, three transfers actually per season available to us. We do have a good budget of round about 79 million. The, this is going to help us in our quest to make this team better. I've also decided to go for the gig and pressing style of play with West Ham during this, this rebuild. And so our first signing of the season is actually going to be a player, a goalkeeper, very young, coming in for to replace Alfonso Areola. A Frenchman replacing a Frenchman by the name of Guillaume Restes coming in in a swap deal 20 million plus Areola going the other way to Toulouse. A second player joining us was a player who was in talks actually with West Ham in real life. In the end decided to stay in Saudi Arabia. A replacement for Thomas Suchek who goes on the swap deal the other way to secure the Saudi bag. It is N'Golo Kante coming in for 60 million plus Suchek. After those signings, we've also made a whole list of sales. Vladimir Kufal, the biggest one, going out for 11.5 million to Newcastle. Aaron Creswell, also quite old, 34 already, goes to Brentford. And Danny Ings, a 31-year-old, third-string striker, goes to Torino for 3.8 million. And last but not least, we bring in one of our loanies, a centre-back. Of course, you guys know where this is going, a Frenchman as well. Funnily enough, our three transfers in have been three Frenchmen. So Jean-Claire Todibo completes the list. 36 million he comes in from Nice. And so this is how we are looking like for the first season. Not a brilliant team, but certainly players like Todibo. It was only 24 as well, our best centre-back. Alvarez in the CDM alongside Conte will of course go down. But for now, he's a specialist CDM a good man for our for this position. Our front three is already looking quite good. Kudus and Bowen still not old. Phil Krug will get replaced down the line. Certainly Kilman also not old in not old yet. Emerson uh, might get attacked next season. But for now, rest as in at 1978 is our starting goalkeeper. Fabianski is going to retire at 39. Fotheringham third goalkeeper. There are also a couple of very interesting youth academy players in our default youth academy. Calapale, 16 year old, 57 rated, 70 to 94 potential. And Charlie Chambers, only 14 at this point, 54 rated, 76 to 94 potential. Both of them are going to get harnessed and then maybe, if they are good enough, promoted to the senior team. We played a majestic first season, fifth spot in the Premier League. Just about missing out on the Champions League. Fifth place, that means we will be playing. Probably Europa League as it stands there. 67 points after 38 games. Only 7 draws but 11 losses. We are ahead of Manchester United, Arsenal and even Chelsea. 
And it gets even better as we have won the FA Cup in the first season itself over Ipswich Town of all teams. 3-2 in the final. And even the Carabao Cup, what is going on? We have won the double in the first season with West Ham. I've not changed too much, but it seems to have come in clutch. 3-2 over Chelsea in the Carabao. Hour. A rematch of the 2023 Champions League final between Manchester City and Inter goes to Man City. The Europa League goes to Roma over Spurs. And finally, a very wacky Conference League final goes to Jurgarden. I'm not sure where they are from. I think they are from Sweden over Vitoria from Portugal. We are looking at 30 goals by Captain Jared Bowen, 28 by Kudus with 10 assists. Incredible. 17 even for Somerville. 11 goals for Loni, uh, Carlos Soler. Corne on loan to uh, Southampton has scored 11 goals. And even N'Golo Kante with 5 goals for ourselves. I'm also switching Paqueta from a left midfielder to a cam. And he goes up by 1 actually to an 83. We've had an immense first season with West Ham. Probably what they would expect or even better than of course what they would expect. Winner of both. The FA Cup as well as the uh, EFL Cup and fifth place in the Premier League. We will most certainly play Europa League football in season number two. And here is confirmation that we will be part of the Europa League in season number two. Our first signing of season number two is a new left back. He's only 18 and he will be the new starter come maybe next season. Emerson still now. At that spot, he's a free agent. It is Jesus Salazar coming in for zero euros. Even after that signing, we still have about 190 million for two final transfers. There are people like Aguert, Zuma, Ward Prowse who have now returned from loan as well. So they will be added to our uh, team. But the one position I'm really not happy with is the striking spot. Where Niklas Füllkrug is 32, he's already going down. And so our second and probably biggest signing of this whole rebuild is a new striker. You may say this is unrealistic, rebuild sombrero. But no, guys. This man has played for Galatasaray last season. The Nigerian superstar coming into the building. He's coming to the Premier League. Not to Chelsea, not to Manchester United. Not even... To Liverpool or Arsenal. It is Victor Ossiman coming to West Ham for 115 million plus Niklas Fieldkrug in a swap deal from Napoli. We have then proceeded to make a couple of sales. Cornet and Zuma both leaving the club. Cornet goes to Girona. Zuma goes to Valencia. For both of those together about 20 million we got. And so as our final signing of season number two, we've gone in for a new centre-back. He's only 23. We had Mavropano, Zagwer at the club, as well as Kilman and, of course, Todibo, who we bought last season permanently. But this guy is really rejuvenating that back line. It is the German Malik TR joining us for 15 million plus Nayef Aguert from Milan. We have Kilman and Mavropanos now as the bench players. Todibo and TO. Even though TO is one lower rated, I hope the game will give him the game time over Mavropanos. Otherwise, we'll have to intervent there. Paqueta out of position. I don't really like that. Uh, he's, of course, a cam, but he's a, a, CDM, a, a CM actually in this game, in this uh, formation. Aussie man is 26, 88. If, guy, if you guys have any ideas how you. Uh, can change the positions with square than what you could usually do in former FIFA's. You could just go in on the player with square and then change his position, but you can't do that here. Andy Irving has also left the club. He's gone to Southampton for 4 million. The first competitive game of the season. I have tried to convert Kapaketa to a CM, but it will take him more than a year. So let's enhance the pro the process against Manchester City at Wembley Stadium with Ossiman at up top and we score, we win 2-1, Bowen and Emerson with the girls. We win our first trophy in season number two. This is going way the end of well. season number two and we finish in third place. What a season we've had. 77 points, 23 wins, 8 draws, 7 losses. Great season. Champions League football in season number three. The FA Cup goes to Chelsea over Man City. 
We have been knocked out by Barrow in round 4. That was not good. The Carabao goes to Chelsea as well over Liverpool. Here we've been beaten in round 4 by Quarley Town. Our Cup Cup performances this season were not good. Barcelona win an all Spanish affair in the Champions League over Villarreal. The Conference League goes to Arsenal over Shakhtar. We finish in first place in the Europa League league phase. Went straight to the round of 16 where we defeated Lazio. We even thumped Benfica in the quarters. But we got knocked out on penalties by Man United. Who lost the final though to PSV Eindhoven from the Netherlands. 37 goals for Bowen who is up to an 87, 89 rated Kudus. No wonder we've done so well. 27 goals for him. 21 goals even for Somerville. Paqueta with 8 goals. 7 for Alvarez but only 6 for Simen. What has happened there? Why has he only played 23 games? I don't know. Was he injured or something? He's in the prime of his career. I don't know who would have played in his place. But uh, yeah, Bowen... Ozyman Kudu is actually the front three. I don't know what this game is doing at times, but uh, Salazar has grown well to an 81. Todibo 85, TR 83. Rest has up to an 87. Conte needs to be replaced next season. He's given us two great seasons, though. I am quite positively surprised that by season number three, we are already in the Champions League. Third in, of course, the Premier League. We've also won the Community Shield. We are now a Champions League club and so it is time to bring home the man who left West Ham to have success in London. He hasn't won the league for Arsenal in three years. I think they didn't win it in the simulation last season. Maybe they did actually, I don't know, but it is Declan Rice coming home from Arsenal for 102 million. That Champions League money coming in clutch. We make another big signing, this time at centre-back, bringing home a player who used to play in the Premier League for Spurs. He's in the meantime made the transfer to PSG. We bring him back now. The aggressive centre-back Christian Romero joining us from PSG for 15 million plus Maximilian Kilman, who goes to France. As a third and final player we go in for a backup striker who can give backup to Aussie man. A player who was Unused for Chelsea. Of course, I know the right between about the rivalry between these two clubs. But at this point, it doesn't matter. Fofana wants to get some game time. At the end of the season, both Angolo Kante and West Fodringham are also retiring. So we'll need to especially replace Fodringham as a backup goalkeeper next season. We've also got Luis Guilherme, an exciting prospect who returned from loan. He's 2077 rated. Of course, we've got Fofana on the bench. Emerson is now a bench player as well as Salazar is uh, the starter at left back. Romero goes into the centre back spot, rise into the CDM spot. He's only 27 still, uh, 88 rated. Romero is 28 if I'm not mistaken. He has 86 rated. And then Fofana is 23. A good pack up to Aussie man, who is, of course. The starter, hopefully he gets all the game time. At the halfway season. point of the season, we are sitting in second place. Just four points of Manchester City. Nine ahead of Arsenal and ten already ahead of Man United. We, however, did finish only in 12th place in the UEFA Champions League league phase. Three defeats. You can see one there on the top left against Monaco. We uh, go. will go through a playoff round. Where we will face Legia Warsaw. I think we've been really uh, lucky here in this route. Here it is then. Facing Legia Warsaw. First in Poland. Away from home. In the first leg of the playoff round. And it's a 2-0 win. One Bisaka and Jared Bowen. With the goals. For the second leg I've given game time to some of the fringe players. Like Emerson, Rodriguez, even uh, Fofana at striker and Somerville. On the right wing, who is already at an 87, by the way. And it's another 2-0 win. Somerville and Emerson, the two I've trusted in, come in clutch. 4-0 on aggregate, off to the round of 16. Round of 16, we will be facing Bayer Leverkusen. First at home, with the strong starting 11. The best, strongest starting 11. And it's a one all draw. Ossiman gives us a late equalizer after Havertz, who returned to Leverkusen, gave them the lead early doors. 
This is where it all comes down to round of 16 second leg. Can we proceed to the quarterfinals away from home at the Bay Arena? Yes, it's a 2-1 win. Kudus and Bowen turn the game around. Verts gave them the lead. We win 3-2 and are off to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. In the quarterfinals, we will face Atletico Madrid at the Estadio Metropolitano first. With our full strength starting 11. Let's see how this goes. It's a 2-1 loss. Balogun and Carlos with the goals for them. Kudus gave us an equalizer. Here it is at London Stadium. Second leg. Can we turn the game around and go through to the semi-finals? Yes. It's a 2-0 win. Alvarez and Fofana coming from the bench have scored the goals for us. To put us through 3-2 to the semi-finals of the Champions League. Wow. Arsenal it is in the semi-finals. First at home this time. An all-English affair. Can we make a first step towards a Champions League final? Or will Arsenal crush our dreams? It's a 2-0 loss. This time it might be over. Jonathan David and Fran Garcia. With Arsenal's goals, we lose 2-0 at home. Here it is then. The Arsenal Stadium, the Emirates. Can we... Make a miracle happen here. I'm not really believing in it, but let's see. It's a 2-1 loss. Another loss. Thomas Partey and Jonathan David make us lose 4-1 on aggregate to go out in the semis just before. At the end of the Premier League season, we finish in second place. 24 wins, 11 draws, 3 losses only. 83.7 points behind Manchester City, the champions. We do, however, win the FA Cup on penalties over Newcastle United in the final. And even the Carabao Cup 3-0 in the final over Luton Town. Wow, the domestic double is secure. It's an all-English affair in the Champions League final as Man City defeat Arsenal, who defeated us to win the Champions League. Atalanta win the Europa League final actually over Shakhtar Donetsk from Ukraine. And finally Man United win another trophy for England, defeating Bologna in the Conference League final. We are looking at 44 goals by Bowen, absolutely incredible. 57 goal contributions in 69 games, 25 goals for Seaman, 20 goals for Somerville, 12 for Paqueta and 10 for Kudus. I'm not so sure what I should uh, replace next season. Maybe a better right back than Van Bissaka who is getting older. We may, might need him as a backup. Otherwise, Alvarez is 29. Still a little bit of room to grow. A very great front three. Oziman hasn't really developed as nicely as I would have liked him to. But Rastas definitely has. A very successful season number three. Second in the Premier League. Semi-finals of the Champions League. And winner of both EFL Trophy. EFL Cup actually. And Emirates FA Cup. Season number four has started and we go in for a new center midfielder who will replace Lucas Paqueta. Paqueta is already 28 and this guy here is only 21 and already higher rated than Lucas Paqueta. I am speaking about the Frenchman Warren Zeremery whose contract was expiring at Leverkusen. He comes for 73 million into our club. We've also sold James Ward Prowse so we probably will keep Lucas Paqueta around. But Ward Prowse goes to Arsenal for 19 million. Our second signing of the season is for a new right back, an upgrade on Aaron Wan Bissaka. Coming back to the Premier League from Dortmund, it is Pedro Porro joining us for 83 million. Last but not least, we go in for a backup winger who's only 23 from Leicester City. We work hard on our bench here, bringing in Abdul Fatawu for 44.6 million. I've yet again realized that I've made a mistake. Let's put uh, Porro in the right back spot first. But I haven't got a backup goalkeeper on the bench. So that is a big problem. I've put Sarah Marie in the starting 11 alongside Porro. Paqueta and Juan Bisaka go onto the bench. Samawil is already 88 rated crazy. Fatawu is now a bench player alongside Guillerme. But uh, I should have made the transfer in the goalkeeping spot. Hopefully... Nothing happens to our star in that uh, third place at the halfway point of season number four. 47 points after 23 games, 14 wins, 5 draws, 4 losses. Man City once again running away, away with it ahead of Arsenal. And we have just about missed out on finishing in the top eight. Same points than Milan in, in eight and one point behind Barcelona and Inter. So we will have to go through a playoff round once more. Well, in the playoff round, we will face Dinamo Zagreb, who, uh, of course, could have come worse as well. 
Copenhagen would have been worse. Monaco, even Frankfurt or Braga. It is the first playoff round away in Zagreb in Croatia with our full strength starting 11. And it's a 2-1 win, only just Krezevic gives Zagreb a little bit of hope for the second leg. Second leg quarter, um, uh, playoff round actually, not quarterfinals against Zagreb. And it's a 3-1 win, Pedro Porro, Bowen and Pedro Porro with a brace. Our new man at right back. 5-2 on aggregate against Dinamo Zagreb. Round of 16, we will be facing Leverkusen at home. Not an easy opponent by any stretch. And it's a 2-1 win. Kudus and Ossiman with our goals. Ossiman with the winner in the 89th minute. Can we make it to back-to-back -back quarterfinals away at the Bay Arena? Let's see. It's another 2-1 win. Bowen with a brace. Chouameni playing for Leverkusen. But we win 4-2 on aggregate. Quarterfinals are calling. Well, of course, in the quarterfinals, we had to face the big dogs that are Real Madrid, the kings of Europe, first at the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu, away from home. And it's a 2-1 win. Zera Maria and Osimen score our goals. We win away in Spain, in Madrid. That's a big exclamation mark. This is where it all comes down to. Can we make it yet again into back-to-back -back semi-finals of the UCL? It's a 2 all draw, which means we are through Rice and Bowen. With the goals, Vinny Jr. and Mbappé. The goals from them are not enough. We win 4-3 on aggregate to make it to the semis. This is the stage where we went tumbling down last season. But this season with the squad we've got. A fully 90 plus rated front line. 91 rise, 87 Zeremri and Alvarez. 87 fullbacks even. Can we make it through against Inter Milan? 4-1 win away at, in the first leg. Ossiman with a brace. Kudus and Somerville. Already practically put us through. Even Ossiman missed the pen to make it a hat-trick in the end. It is that we have a big advantage going into the second leg. Can we make it into the Champions League final against Inter at home? It's another win and we make it through 7-3 on aggregate. Zeremri, Fofana and Bowen in the first minute. Make us be the winners back-to-back -back times against Inter. 7-3 on aggregate. We smash them. Well, in the UCL final, we will face PSG, the French giants from the French capital. It's going to be a tough one. Then. We nearly made the mounted a tie title challenge here. 79 points, just two points off Man City. Same points than Chelsea. It was a very tight table here. We lose the FA Cup final to Ipswich of all teams on penalties. Can't make it back-to-back -back FA Cup triumphs. And we even lose the Community Shield... And we've lost the Carabao Cup as well. So another loss to Chelsea. The Europa League goes to Juventus over Porto. While the Conference League goes to Benfica on penalties over Mönchengladbach from Germany. We are looking at 36 goals by Bowen who is 91 rated. 13 assists as well. 25 for Fatav who has played a lot of games. I mean uh, Kudus has played less games. How has that happened? I don't know. Maybe they've preferred Fatavu and Somerville. But Porro with 13, 10 for Zeramari with 11 assists. And only 10 goals in 21 appearances. Why is that for Ossiman? I am not sure. But oh well, he will play the final. So will Mohamed Kudus. Going into that final, this is how the team is looking like. An absolutely phenomenal team. Not a lot of players under the overall of 90. The backline and, uh, is, of course. But uh, even there, we have Porro and Salazar who are the lowest rated at 87. However, now it is time for Wembley Stadium in London, basically at home for West Ham against PSG from France. This is Salazar into Rice. Rice for Ossiman, back to Zeremri. We start off strong here. This is Victor Ossiman, scores! This may be the earliest goal we've ever scored in a Champions League final, four minutes in. Victor Ossiman, first shot of the game, 1-0 to West Ham against PSG. Gianluigi Donnarumma has been beaten. I mean, great display. Layoff by Ossiman. Zeramari gives it back to him. And then he blasts the shit out of it very precisely as well. Careful. Barcola gets away from Porro with one single trick. And Rice comes back with an incredible interception. Pedro Porro trying to go forwards. Looking for the way himself. This is still Pedro Porro with a great piece of trickery. One on one with Donnarumma. This may be the greatest goal of a fullback ever in a Champions League final. Look at this run by Pedro Porro. From his own half it starts. 
He goes all the way, and then this piece of trickery to go past the, the defender. Fool him, actually. Number 27, Upamecano, of course. Careful, all the danger from PSG comes from that left side. This is Barcola. Still Barcola going past both Porro and Royce. Now gives it inside and Restas with a big save. Careful, once again, Barcola is free here. Gets past Romero, tries to get back though. This is still Barcola. Barcola past Todibo and somehow we get a foot in. I don't know, even know who that was. Porro going forward again. Porro again. What a game he's had. What a signing that's been. Porro looking for the other fullback, Salazar. Salazar and Simen. It's 3 0. What a goal. A bit of luck here that the rebound falls to Simen. The two fullbacks, the weakest part, on paper at least, in this team. Do all the work and Simen just needs to tap it home. Now Tell looking for Neves. Gets it back. Neves into Tell again. Still, Matistel. Matistel scores one, gets one back for PSG. In edit time in the first half, it's Matistel to score. As Barcola gives it into Tell once again, the goal scorer for the first one for PSG. Still, Matistel going inside, turning the defender. But Salazar gets his body in the way. PSG again on the charge, this is Matistel, he's been their danger man alongside Barcola, but this time Restes is up to it. Not a lot happened in the second half, maybe now Bernardo Silva going inside. Bernardo Silva still on the ball, gives it into Tell, who's had the best chances for them, and this time Restes saves. We have brought on three players, Tiaf comes in for um, Todibo, we have brought on... Paqueta coming in centre midfield for Zer Emery. And Osimhen goes off to uh, be replaced by Fofana. And also, I've nearly forgotten him. Somerville comes in for Bowen. Corner kick now, PSG. Bernardo Silva. We clear it off the line. It should about be it. Already one minute over. In extra in added time here. One more long ball by Restas, and that's it. West Ham United on top of Europe. We have won the Champions League with the Hammers. Glory to the Hammers after their Conference League triumph. Two times we've won both the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup, and now we've won the big one, the UEFA Champions League. Porro has been an absolute superstar this game. Osimhen has scored the opener. What a game. What a rebuild. We have brought success to the Hammers. From the first season onwards, it was a great rebuild. And I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, then please consider dropping a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and tell me what other ideas you have for me to produce in the upcoming weeks and months. For now, I'm gonna leave you alone. We don't see the Champions League trophy, actually, who uh, Christian Romero, which Christian Romero is going to lift. But well, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see what he's going to lift there. What is he lifting there? He's lifting wind for the world. It's been Rebuild Sombrero. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Until next time, I'm out.